We're going to begin with uh, Steve Miller, the president of Miller Sports Properties and really the visionary of this race. Steve, celebrating our 10-year anniversary here at the Tour of Utah, did you ever think that you would see the race where it is today? Well, clearly, uh, when, when you put events on, you, you want to have them typically be bigger than not, um, especially when you go to the expense and the effort to host a bike race. Uh, you, you, want to, you, you don't want to put on a big bike race and not have anybody show up, whether it's a rider or a fan. So, yeah, I mean, in the early days, we knew that uh, we would have to take a stand, walk, run approach, which has been our model. And uh, I think it's paying dividends for us. We're, we're now in our 10th in our year, as you said, and, and I think uh, this was quite a way to celebrate uh, the Tour of Utah. This was a, a great week of racing. You guys are a race that's always innovating and always changing. What's on the horizon for next year? Uh, well, I, I think it's safe to say that we will visit some parts of Utah that we haven't visited before. I think it's uh, very likely that uh, there will be some parts of the state. Uh, I mean, our goal is to, to have it be a tour of Utah. So we've got a little bit of work to do with a few of the, uh, the towns that we haven't visited before. Uh, we, we certainly won't expand the race. I think we've got our hands full with seven days of racing. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll probably look to uh, have a, another pro tour team or two. And uh, I think our goal is to continue to elevate the level of competition. Uh, this was uh, at an all-time high in terms of uh, competitiveness, uh, but I don't think we've hit our ceiling yet in terms of the, the quality of the field that we can bring to Utah. You guys made a uh, big change this year, expanding into Evanston, Wyoming. Talk about how that went for the race. Well, that was really exciting. We'd always had the Mirror Lake Highway uh, on the drawing board to, uh, because it's such a beautiful scenic byway. And, and with the Utah Office of Tourism being one of our key partners, we wanted to uh, showcase that stage. But there really wasn't a way to do it if we didn't incorporate Evanston. And it really dawned on us one day in a, in a brainstorming meeting that it's not unprecedented to start a stage of a bike race outside of the borders of your state. I mean, they do it at the Tour de France all the time. So we figured that we'd follow that model. And, it, and it's, I think it turned out to be quite fun. All right, that's Steve Miller, president of Miller Sports Properties. We're going to go down to the end now. Uh, Vinner Gomez is going to be speaking through his translator for the Lampre Merida team. Uh, I want to ask about riding for Chris, uh, what it was like to be Chris's lieutenant in the race, a uh, very important role for Vinner. Sì, diciamo che niente. Ora viene un obiettivo importante come la Vuelta a Spagna e, e niente, credo che eh, so che in questa corsa ci teneva anche Horner e ho cercato di arrivare al punto giusto per essere un uomo di punta per lui e essere uguale nella Vuelta a Spagna. Says that uh, he uh, was here now his goal next goal is the Vuelta of Spagna and uh, it was like a big uh, chance for uh, uh, improve his shape and uh, have a good help for Chris that uh, he really took care about this race so uh, he is pretty sure to have done a good job for that so he's happy. All right we'll move to Yuri Koksan in our Utah Sports Commission Sprint Leaders jersey the white jersey competition for the Smart Stop Pro Cycling Team. There are a lot of a uh, lot of jerseys for you this week talk about your time in yellow and then ending the race as the sprint leader or sprint winner I should say. Yeah, so far uh, we had an amazing week. This week uh, we are the only non-World Tour team who wear the yellow jersey. And it's really nice to see that small American team has the, ye the yellow jersey in one of the biggest American races. Uh, the last two days was quite hard for me because all sprinters went home, so I was a little bit afraid, but I felt good. And the crowds were awesome today. It's always nice to see that they are still cheering on us, even if we are 10 minutes back. <laughs> so it's always nice, and I like it. Can you talk more about the Smart Stop team and what it's like and what it means for your team to be sitting here in the final press conference with teams like BMC, teams like Garmin, teams like Lampre, serious world tour teams? Yeah, like I said, we had an amazing week. Uh, nobody expected this from us. But from the beginning of the year, we <laughs> raced very good. We are the first uh, team in UCI America Tour ranking. I'm America Tour leader, so we have done really good this season so far. <coughs> All right, we'll go to Dylan Toons in our Subaru Best Young Riders jersey for the BMC team. Dylan, just how hard was this race? They call it America's toughest stage race. Did you feel that during this week of racing? Uh, yes, I feel it, yeah. Uh, I do also. Last month, uh, Chiro Valdausta. It's a race for under 23. It's 
a bit the same, but this is more harder. Can you talk about what it's like to ride with a, a veteran like Cadell Evans as a young rider in the peloton, to have Cadell as your leader at the Tour of Utah? Yeah, it's my first race with the BMC racing team because of I'm a stagiaire, and it's also my first race with Cadell. It's amazing. He's a nice guy, and I learn a lot this week from him. <laughs> I think he's looking for a ride for next year. <laughs> I signed already for two years. <laughs> I think Cadell's ready to sign him right now. Let's go to Cadell Evans next. Uh, Cadell, back-to-back victories at the Tour of Utah. That's got to be huge for you. Talk about uh, taking two stage wins here on the final day and your ride today. Yeah, um, today came as a pleasant surprise, actually. Um, <clears throat> oh, after yesterday's effort, I, I was, didn't have too, too high expectations on myself, but um, no, I saw a lot of guys have been paying for the, um, you know, the, it's been really hard racing, really competitive racing, but a high level every day, and it's been quite unrelenting, the pace, whether it's flat or windy or <clears throat> uphill, obviously it's been uphill a lot. But um, I sort of come, I'm coming better and better as the race goes on, so that's a, it's a good sign for me looking towards my future races. But um, no, really, just a great surprise to come here. And um, I've been coming all week out here to dinner on uh, Main Street here in Park City, so I'm pretty happy to uh, pretty happy to, to get a stage win here as well. You, know, you came to this race uh, a few years ago as a guest, not as a rider. You were at the uh, Snowbird finish, and you had a chance to look at that course profile, and immediately you said, "This is a stage that I can win." Talk a little bit about that and uh, targeting the tour of Utah. Back in 2011 I didn't know if I'd um, when or if I'd ever have a chance to ride the tour of Utah but of course I saw the event and I was guest to guest to the Miller, Miller family particularly Steve Miller <clears throat> and his wife and um, I saw a, a great event and um, I have, have my own race as well in Australia now so I understand some of the some of the difficulties behind the scenes to get something like this together but also I see the um, the benefits I think to Utah and hey when you have scenery like that I can't I don't know anyone anyone I no one I know who watched this race that doesn't want to come and visit Utah now because of the beautiful scenery you have and um, so I think um, you know hopefully I wish I wish the, the event the, the best of uh, the best of luck for the future and um, for us as riders to come here training good weather at altitude it's um, <clears throat> it's also really good it fits in really well with our program as well and you can probably thank Mr Horner here for you know coming here last year performing quite well and then going and winning the Vuelta also um, probably motivates a few, few more pro tour riders to come over here and I don't think you'll have any more trouble getting any more pro tour teams in here next year. All right, let's go to Chris Horner, the Lamprey Merida team. Chris, uh, you've been battling uh, illness for the last few weeks, and you're still battling it here at the Tour of Utah. What was it like to push through that, uh, not just yesterday, but again on today's stage? You had a great ride for coming into this one uh, still ill. Yeah, today's stage, though, I really wasn't affected by it. At the beginning, some coughing as normal, but because it stayed dry all day, so I had the best legs today. Uh, didn't seem to be affected by the breathing at all. So today was the first day where I felt uh, normal, more or less. Uh, yesterday was actually the hard one when we went over the, the second to last climb because the weather was started with the rain and the humidity, and then it was a problem. But today, honestly, it was almost 100%. So yeah, I have nice legs, good form, and, and uh, good result. A lot of the guys that uh, were climbing in the front group out there said, boy, I feel bad for the riders in the Vuelta. Are you confident with your form coming out of Utah as you head to the Vuelta, España? Yeah, it's better now than it was last year, so um, I just need the health to clear up a little bit. So hopefully these rest days, um, uh, clearly I've been working with the team doctors and trying to get healthy, but it's hard to get healthy when you're doing the Tour de France and then you flip around and you do Tour of Utah. So. Over this next week, I take it easy and um, the lungs clear up, and then after that, I'll be 100% and ready to go on to win something at, at the Tour of Spain. Uh, a lot of guys, good competition this year going to Spain, so it's going to be a nice race, and uh, hopefully, we'll put on a good show for the fans. All right, finally, we'll go to Tom Danielson, our overall race winner for the Garmin Sharp defending champion here at the Tour of Utah. Tom, how is this year's race different from last year's? Obviously, you won in a very different way from the 2013 edition. <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, totally different. Last year we had Lachlan in the race leader's jersey, and um, I was <clears throat> coming off the Tour de France, so I was a bit of an unknown and, you know, just ended up being pretty strong on the snowbird day, and then it was like, hey, maybe you can win the race if you go bananas on the Empire climb, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, whereas this year, you know, coming in, I knew I was in good form. I put my hand up. I said, I want to I win this race, and um, so it's a lot more pressure, a lot harder on the team. Um, you could say we had a much younger, less experienced team this year too, um, with a lot of kinks along the way, illness and crashes and stuff, stuff like that. So um, 
everybody performed above their above and beyond this week, and um, it was the least I could do is is uh, perform well on my end. You got a stage win here as well, uh, but obviously the yellow jersey is the big goal for you. What's next on your calendar? What are you looking ahead to leaving the tour of Utah? Uh, barbecue tonight <laughs> <laughs> in Park City. Um, just I got to pay back my teammates. They need to eat well and drink some beer and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I guess there's a race in Colorado in a couple of weeks, so I figure I'll probably go to that one too. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit uh, more about your team, specifically the young guys and those guys coming fresh off the Tour de France? They fought tooth and nail for you out there. It really seemed like the entire Garmin squad rallied around you. Yeah, it was uh, really unbelievable, especially, you know, Ben and Alex coming from their first Tour de France. They only had one week. Um, you know, you could see a guy like Chris who, who was just getting better and better in the Tour de France, whereas those guys were all kinds of new experiences every day with the elastic in the back and, and you know crashing 10 times in, their, in a race they weren't used to that um, so they came here and, and uh, both of them didn't expect to perform as well as they did and you know we all saw what Ben did we knew he was capable of it but that guy is a incredible locomotive and Alex was fantastic today as well so they, they really stepped it up you mentioned, uh, talk, speaking of riders stepping up, but we saw a lot of breakthrough performances, both uh, teams like Smart Stop and then young riders, guys like Joey Roscoff. You mentioned uh, those riders as very impressive rides. What's it like uh, at the Tour of Utah, kind of seeing those riders come up through the ranks? I mean, do you take notice of those riders and expect to see them at the World Tour in a couple of years? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the level here is really high this year. And, um, you know, we all know those guys are good. You know, especially uh, Eric Young, you know, you know, a guy like that is a great sprinter, but, you know, we can all agree that that stage he won was anything but easy. So for, for a guy like that to win that stage and, and see it and all the teams that take note and how he did it, you know, that, that's going to bode well for him in the future. Now maybe on all of his training rides he's a believer rather than like, oh, maybe someday I could, you know, race in, at a high level. So now he can, and <clears throat> I think that that's what – these races are incredible for. All right, uh, thank you very much. I think we can let these guys go. We're going to ask Cadell, Chris, and Tom to stay for a Q and A, uh, but we'll let the uh, other three guys go. We're going to uh, start with Steve back on the end again. Steve, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, we talked earlier about what was in store for 2015. Uh, do you know the dates yet? Are those concrete? Yeah, I believe it's uh, August 3rd to August 9th next year, I believe, is uh, what we've been... Uh, the position on the calendar. I think you got three guys to your left who are about to block that out on their calendar. Uh, let's go back to Cadell Evans. Uh, Cadell, they call this America's toughest stage race. Did you feel that way? I mean, is this as hard as they hype it to be? Um, I don't know if you want to make it any harder. If you want more people to come back, it is, it is, is difficult. But I'd say the quality of the racing and the, and like the motivation of the field here was what ran it really hard. Say, and then leaving uh, Evanston, Wyoming. Okay, crosswind for 60 k's. Um, that's not easy. That's not easy by any means. And that might might, might have been, let's say, an easyish day. And um, <clears throat> but in the end, it was really just solid racing all week, which made it really tough. Of course, the climbs are. Um, are, uh, are always going to be hard and the altitude and so on, but um, you know, everyone understands that and they take their time to make some you know, adaption to it. But um, <clears throat> you don't want to make it too tough, but um, I, I'd say I, I can't compare it to Colorado. You'll have to ask those that ride Colorado as well, but it's, I'd say it's tough enough for now. <clears throat> 
can you talk about uh, the altitude? A lot of these climbs go way higher than the highest climbs that you'll see in races like the Tour de France. How did you deal with the altitude? How did you feel as you headed towards eight, 9,000 feet? Yeah, yeah, I was fortunate. Oh, I, di I didn't ride the Tour de France this year, obviously, so I had a bit more time than, than these other guys who, who came from the Tour, and that's what's um, sometimes limiting. I had time to come here and take my time to adapt. I understand the Belkin team were here, and a couple of my teammates were here for two and some three weeks, so, um, you know, we. We, we take that time away from home but to, to adapt for this race, but also to, that, that's a benefit to us for the rest of the season. So um, if you have time, you can come here and adapt to the altitude. If not, um, you have to ask this gentleman here. I don't know how he does it. All right, let's go to Chris Horner uh, to Cadell's left. Chris, uh, tough altitude out there. Obviously, you're battling illness. You guys are in locked in fierce competition as you go head-to-head -head with Tom. But after the race, you guys uh, seem like uh, you get along pretty well. Talk about your relationship with Tom. Yeah, of course. It's yeah, bike racing is when you get when you get we see each other every weekend or a few times a month or whatever it happens to be. So and, and when once the bike racing starts, of course it's it's uh, full on and everybody wants to win in this competition, but the bike race finishes, it's all done. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> There are a lot of unknowns for you coming to the Tour of Utah. I understand you're riding with a lot of your teammates for the first time on the Lampre Merida team. It looks like Gomez was a great teammate. Talk about uh, your team's work and specifically Gomez riding with you when you had Tom isolated. Yeah, we had we came with a, a team that was unknown for me, so it was first time riding with all of them and the first time they came here in the U.S. and stuff. But they did an amazing job. It was the best team I've had with Lampre Merida the whole year. So. For me personally, they really looked after me the whole time. We had a great director with Bruno, and, and there was never a point in time anywhere from the beginning to the first 90% of the race where I needed to even talk and ask for anything. They were always near me, always looking after me. And then the last part of the race is just time for me to go to work there. So, um, but they really, when the team does that much work for you and you're a little bit sick, you got to push a little bit hard still. So uh, Winner did an amazing job yesterday and, and um, certainly today. He was, uh, when he attacked today and Danielson went and opened up the, the gap and I kind of covered the moves from behind and, and let the gap grow a little bit. And then um, I knew I was going across, but it was just a matter of uh, finding a good time and a good point to go across. And uh, as they were playing little games back there and then I, got a little gap and jumped across. And of course, it's my teammate up there, so he's gonna wait for me. Did you feel like uh, you might have a shot to bring back that 57, 58 seconds when you had isolated Tom with you and Vinner? No, the plan at that point in time when I came across was was to move uh, Winner up to third on podium and win the stage. That's, that's what my goal was at that point in time. The problem is, of course, is the, the climb starts to, won't say it levels out, but it becomes less hard, and certainly it gets spots where the bigger climbers uh, have more power than I do, so that you could see uh, with Belkin where he's coming across, and, and of course Cadell with the power he's got can come across on those roller parts. Uh, I was quite surprised when Cadell caught us on the descent, though, because the last 2K of the, of the climb I was probably doing 40 40, 45k an hour. I was going full gas through there, so I thought, I thought we had dislodged Cadell, but he did an amazing job coming back to us. And uh, his tactics in the last two corners were uh, caught us all off guard, and it was beautiful to watch uh, and painful at the same time. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Tom Danielson in our yellow jersey, our overall race leader, or winner, I should say, once again. Tom, uh, talk about when you were riding with Chris. Were you ever worried that you were outnumbered by the Lampre guys on that final climb today? Um, honestly, the biggest thing I was worried about is just, like, you know, flatting or dropping, you know, or, like, the other day, my bike breaking and having to get a bike change and my car wasn't behind me. So, like, I was leaving a lot in the tank to, to, to have to deal with those problems, and I wanted to make the race hard at the bottom, so... So it was easier to control, and then when I did that, um, you know, then there was the tactics. And, you know, when I saw Chris coming across, I slowed down a little bit and wanted him to get there because then it would be him and his teammate. And then I didn't do the math in my head. I didn't know winner was going to be third on GC, so I was a little bit scared, honestly, with them because, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't know that they were right. I couldn't understand why, why he wasn't just selling out for Chris solely, you know. Um, so, but now I know <laughs> he was going for third. Uh, but yeah, they rode an awesome race uh, with, with the guys they had and, you know, they all stepped up to the plate. So it was really cool to see them all, all up there today. I know it's hard to put into words, but can you describe that moment when you came around the final turn, you could see the finish line here in Park City and uh, you had the yellow jersey wrapped up? Yeah, it's, it's magic, you know. Um, it's really special to come across the line with so many, uh, so many fans. Um, 
you know, I, I wanted to start crying. I mean, so much work goes into it, into it, and we, all of us athletes have been through so much that when it all comes together like it did this week, uh, we all understand what that means, and it was really special. All right, we'll open it up. Very incredible for all right, uh, thank you very much. I think we can let these guys go. We're going to ask Cadell, Chris, and Tom to stay for a Q&A, uh, but we'll let the uh, other three guys go. We're going to uh, start with Steve back on the end again. Steve, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, we talked earlier about what was in store for 2015. Uh, do you know the dates yet? Are those concrete? Yeah, I believe it's uh, August 3rd to August 9th next year, I believe, is uh, what we've been... Uh, the position on the calendar. I think you got three guys to your left who are about to block that out on their calendar. Uh, let's go back to Cadell Evans. Uh, Cadell, they call this America's toughest stage race. Did you feel that way? I mean, is this as hard as they hype it to be? Um, I don't know if you want to make it any harder. If you want more people to come back, it is, it is, is difficult. But I'd say the quality of the racing and the, and like the motivation of the field here was what ran it really hard. Say, so, and then leaving uh, Evanston, Wyoming. Okay, crosswind for 60 k's. Um, that's not easy. That's not easy by any means. And that might might, might have been, let's say, an easyish day. And um, <clears throat> but in the end, it was really just solid racing all week, which made it really tough. Of course, the climbs are. Um, are, uh, are always going to be hard and the altitude and so on, but um, you know, everyone understands that and they take their time to make some you know, adaption to it. But um, <clears throat> you don't want to make it too tough, but um, I, I'd say I, I can't compare it to Colorado. You'll have to ask those that ride Colorado as well, but it's, I'd say it's tough enough for now. <clears throat> Can you talk about uh, the altitude? A lot of these climbs go way higher than the highest climbs that you'll see in races like the Tour de France. How did you deal with the altitude? How did you feel as you headed towards eight, 9,000 feet? Yeah, yeah, I was fortunate. Oh, I, di I didn't ride the Tour de France this year, obviously, so I had a bit more time than, than these other guys who, who came from the Tour, and that's what's um, sometimes limiting. I had time to come here and take my time to adapt. I understand the Belkin team were here, and a couple of my teammates were here for two and some three weeks so um you know we, we we take that time away from home but to, to adapt for this race but also to, that that's a benefit to us for the rest of the season so um if you have time you can come here and adapt to the altitude if not um you have to ask this gentleman here i don't know how he does it all right let's go to chris horner uh, to cadell's left chris uh, tough altitude out there obviously you're battling illness you guys are in locked in fierce competition as you go head to head with tom but after the race you guys uh, seem like uh, you get along pretty well talk about your relationship with tom yeah, of course. It's yeah, bike racing is when you get when you get we see each other every weekend or a few times a month or whatever it happens to be. So and and when once the bike racing starts, of course it's it's uh full on and everybody wants to win in this competition, but the bike race finishes, it's all done. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> there are a lot of unknowns for you coming to the Tour of Utah. I understand you're riding with a lot of your teammates for the first time on the Lampre Merida team. It looks like Gomez was a great teammate. Talk about uh, your team's work and specifically Gomez riding with you when you had Tom isolated. Yeah, we, had, we came with a, a team that was unknown for me, so it was the first time riding with all of them and the first time they came here in the U.S. and stuff. But they did an amazing job. It was the best team I've had with Lampre Meridia the whole year. So for me personally, they really looked after me the whole time. We had a great director with Bruno, and, and there was never a point in time anywhere from the beginning to the first 90% of the race where I needed to even talk and ask for anything. They were always near me, always looking after me. And then the last part of the race is just time for me to go to work there. So, um, but they really, when the team does that much work for you and you're a little bit sick, you got to push a little bit hard still. So uh, Winner did an amazing job yesterday and, and um, certainly today. He was, uh, when he attacked today and Danielson went, 
I mean, opened up the, the gap and I kind of covered the moves from behind and, and let the gap grow a little bit. And then um, I knew I was going across, but it was just a matter of uh, finding a good time and a good point to go across. And uh, as they were playing little games back there, and then I got a little gap and jumped across. And uh, of course, it's my teammate up there, so he's going to wait for me. Did you feel like uh, you might have a shot to bring back that 57, 58 seconds when you had isolated Tom with you and Vinner? No, the plan at that point in time when I came across was, was to move uh, Winner up to third on podium and win the stage. That's, that's what my goal was at that point in time. The problem is, of course, is the, the climb starts to, won't say it levels out, but it becomes less hard. And certainly it gets spots where the bigger climbers uh, have more power than I do. So that you could see uh, with Belkin where he's coming across and, and of course, Cadell with the power he's got can come across on those roller parts. Uh, I was quite surprised when Cadell caught us on the descent though, because the last 2K of the, of the climb, I was probably doing 40, 40, 45 K an hour, I was going full gas through there. So I thought, I thought we had dislodged Cadell, but he did an amazing job coming back to us. And uh, his tactics in the last two corners were, uh, caught us all off guard and it was beautiful to watch uh, and painful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll go to Tom Danielson in our yellow jersey, our overall race leader, or winner, I should say, once again. Tom, uh, talk about when you were riding with Chris. Were you ever worried that you were outnumbered by the Lampre guys on that final climb today? Um, Honestly, the biggest thing I was worried about was just like, you know, flatting or dropping, you know, or like the other day, my bike breaking and having to get a bike change and my car wasn't behind me. So like, I was leaving a lot in the tank to, to have to deal with those problems and I wanted to make the race hard at the bottom so, so it was easier to control and then when I did that, um, you know, then there was the tactics and, you know, when I saw Chris coming across, I slowed down a little bit and wanted him to get there because then it would be him and his teammate and then, I didn't do the math in my head. I didn't know winner was going to be third on GC, so I was a little bit scared, honestly, with them because, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't know that they were. I couldn't understand why why he wasn't just selling out for Chris solely, you know. Um, so, but now I know <laughs> he was going for third. Uh, but yeah, they rode an awesome race uh, with with the guys I had, and you know, they all stepped up to the plate. So it was really cool to see them all up there today. I know it's hard to put into words, but can you describe that moment when you came around the final turn, you could see the finish line here in Park City, and uh, you had the yellow jersey wrapped up? Yeah, it's, it's magic, you know. Um, it's really special to come across the line with so many, uh, so many fans. Um, you know, I, I wanted to start crying. I mean, so much work goes into it, into it and we, all of us athletes have been through so much that when it all comes together like it did this week, uh, we all understand what that means, and it was really special. All right, we'll open it up for questions from our journalists. I believe everything should be healed up as soon as I stop racing my bike for a little bit. So uh, we'll see how San Diego goes. And then from there, it's, a, it's just a jump over, back over to Europe and ready to start Spain. Uh, Cadell, Chris, you heard Chris describe your tactics in the finale as uh, beautiful and painful. Um, did you know anything about the finish and did you have a plan uh, for how you would approach Sorry, the Cadell, yeah. yeah um, how, you, how you would approach the finish if you were there? The yeah, yeah um, you know, I looked at the map, saw where the corners were and um, chose a spot where, I'd, where it's going to need to be. But um, you know, most of all, I need to be here and d depending what happened on the last climb and, and, and how hard these guys were going were, were gonna to be um, attacking each other and so on would probably depend whether I, uh, I'd get to the finish or not. But um, yeah, I had a little plan. I didn't expect to go quite so early, but, um, <clears throat> but I saw they were sort of... These guys looked a little bit hesitant, but I completely understand that. They've got uh, a lot to lose uh, in terms of safety and so on. We've sort of got everything to gain there. So um, it's nice to be on the other side of the fence for once, because normally I'm the one there in GC getting caught by the, caught by the guys coming back, and I have to, work, have to think about GC before I can think about, the st about the, a stage win. And, um, but um, yeah, for the way it turned out this week, I was here racing for stages, and um, yeah, it's been, been a pleasure. Hi, Tom. Congratulations. I'm just wondering how you would compare this year's course with the additional elevation and the additional day to, to last year, what, what that was like. Yeah, it was way, way harder. I, I would think that we all would argue that <clears throat> not only was uh, the stages harder, you know, starting with the first day. You know, last year we drove to the top of that climb and then started up there. This year we, we rode up the whole entire climb. You could see guys were already at their threshold and we were just creeping up it. So, I mean, it was hard <clears throat> that. And then a lot of the other days had wind, so it was a little bit nervous and you had to use a little bit more energy in the cross ones and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, the new Powder Mountain, that, that stage was super hard. Um, and then this year, you know, the, the Snowbird Day with the additional two climbs was, was very hard. So yeah, <clears throat> much harder. But the field was, uh, I think, arguably stronger as well, and that, and that made a m much more aggressive racing. You saw all those big groups, lots of chasing. I, I don't think we ever really stopped and, and chatted very much this year. <clears throat> Maybe today just was the first time, you know, we kind of stopped for a pee and it was like, whoa, guys, that was crazy. <laughs> what is your, <laughs> did we just go 45 kilometers in 45 minutes? Like, what, wait, is that 60? Whoa. So yeah, it has been, it's been pretty fast. Tom, you and the team have had to go pretty deep this week to, to get the win. Uh, do you feel you're on the right path now and in good shape to take on TJ and uh, some of the others at uh, Colorado? Well, I, I wish we were doing the same climbs here as we were in Colorado. This is a problem. You know, obviously my form is really good. And, and uh, you know, if we had these same climbs in the same scenario, you know, I think I'd have a really good shot. Um, but obviously Colorado is a little bit more difficult of a race to win because of the shallower climbs and the lack of the climbs. So um, I'm not taking anything for granted. I'm just show up there with good condition and, you know, do the best I can. Yeah, I've been training on my time trial bike for that uphill time trial, but we all know TJ just lit us up last year. So he's a favorite and uh, I'm going to enjoy my victory here for now and, and worry about Colorado when I get there. Tom, can you talk a little bit about yesterday's bike problem that you had and, and what's the thought process going through your head as you're stopped, pulled over and People are going down the hill a million miles an hour. What do you, what do you think about and how do you stay calm and patient as you try to get back in the group? Um, I was pretty, pretty calm. I, the only thing I knew is like, I have this really nice RCA bike that's like, my, it's like my really nice, I love this bike that I'm on. And uh, the bike on the car was not that bike. So I really didn't want that bike. Um, and then I got it. So like that was, the hardest thing was just mentally like switching over to like realize like I'm, not going to be on this super light, stealth feeling, awesome bike. It's still a good bike, don't get me wrong, but um, that was the hardest thing for me. And um, position was a little bit different, but I, I, I dealt with it and, and got through the day, no problem. One more down on the end. Uh, one more, Tom. You seemed pretty poised, pretty calm this week. How, how, would you, how uh, threatened did you feel this week? Um, I try not to focus on that. I think that's the, you know, these guys sitting to my right, you know, that's something that you can always learn from them. You know, they, they you know, you never know what's around the corner. And if you're sitting there dwelling on it, you know, you're not going to win the Tour de France or the Vuelta Espana every single day. I mean, that's 21 days with a much more possibility of uh, disaster like here. So I just focused on everything I could control. Um, and we did a really good job with the team. We came up with a game plan. Uh, regardless of, you know, the Tour de France winner shooting across to a breakaway with a bunch of guys that are really strong. Yeah, we just stayed to our, we just stayed to our plan and said, all right, we, you know, we lose or we win or lose, we're just going to stick to this and execute this the best we can. And it, everybody, it's easier for each guy to, to, to focus and accomplish that task if he has one legit task, you know, instead of it changing. You know, oh, wait a second, now there's a really good guy in that breakaway, so we're all screwed, you know. It's like, all right, like Phil yesterday. Phil, we're going to go this speed up, up this climb. Don't worry about anything else. That's all you have to do is do that speed. And, and it was easier for him to do that, that task. And, and you guys saw that we, we accomplished what we needed to. So really, that was the, the key strategy for, for the week, was, was just making tasks and accomplishing them and not worrying about what other people are doing. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, we'll go to Steve for some final closing comments on this year's edition of the Tour of Utah. Well, I, I'd just like to thank uh, everybody that came out to either spectate uh, at this year's event or cover it through a media role. Uh, but particularly, I'd like to thank uh, Tommy and Chris and Cadell and their teams and all the other teams that came to Utah this year um, for conducting themselves the way they do, for racing as, as hard as they do, and for entertaining us the way that they do. It's a pleasure to have you gentlemen here. You're welcome back anytime. And we really appreciate uh, having you in the, in the Peloton in Utah. Thank you very much.
All right, we're going to do one more photo opportunity here as we celebrate our 10th anniversary. We have the Tour of Utah's first winner joining us today who won the race back in 2004. So uh, this is John Oscar Thorpe. Go ahead and take a seat up there with our uh, original winner and our 10-year anniversary winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, thanks again, guys. Thanks for being here at Kimball Arts Center for a press conference. That does it.